I'm Henry Louis Gates Jr. We are a people of resilience, never giving up, always giving back, no matter what happens. We fight through the pain. We protect our traditions. We uphold our excellence. So let's protect our lives with vaccines we can trust so we can embrace what matters most.
the Sunday morning worship experience of the Williams Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, where Reverend Dr. Dwayne Crew and Sister Nancy Crew are our pastor and first lady. We are located at 1630 15th Street in the Garden City of Augusta, Georgia. Join us on Tuesday at 12 noon for our noonday power prayer. Wednesday night Bible study with our pastor at 6 o'clock p.m. And Thursday morning Bible study at 10 a.m. with former and retired pastor Reverend Jean R. Dean. Don't forget to sow a seed into our ministry group. Give a buy, take now, or milling it or dropping it off at our church. Stay connected with us via social media or our website at Happy Easter to all of you, or Resurrection Sunday. Pick one. Either way, it's so good to see all of you this morning, to have all of you who are with us, those of you joining us here in person, those of you on the various internet applications. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us be glad in it. Come now as we sing our opening hymn of praise at the cross.
you may be seated this morning. These are our announcements. Our condolences goes out to the Lewis and the Clayton families during the passing of uh, Brother Walter Clayton, Jr. Don't forget that Men and Women Day will be next Sunday. There is an offering uh, for you to please remember Brother, Brother Matthews when he comes with the Sunday School Review will give our financial appeal. Uh, this morning for Men and Women's Day. Join us on Tuesdays at 12 noon for the Noonday Power Prayer beginning at 12 noon via the conference call number. So we'll be, we'll be collecting food perishable items. Yes, we're going to make food bags for the needy. Uh, well, what will be in these bags? We're going to do them a little different this time. We're going to do pretzels, granola bars, crackers, popcorn, goldfish, goldfish crackers. Trail mix, dried fruit, pickles, individual wrap, tuna, chicken packets, canned food items, bottled water, flavor. This is the kind of stuff we want like this. So they, they own about a dollar, two dollars each. So when you go just wrap one, throw one in there. And so when those who come by and they do come by uh, asking do we have anything to eat, the little little water packet we can we can add to that. So we're going to do a little individual bags this time. So, so if you, when you're shopping, just throw one or two in there. And, and as if we all throw one or two in there, we'll have quite a bit. So when people come by looking for something, we have something to offer them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for what you're about to do. Yes, church conference will be Tuesday night at uh, April 19th at 6 p.m. via the Zoom format. The login information is on your April calendar, but call our office if you can't find your calendar. The Senior Adult Ministry will be hosting a meritorial mer candidate forum on Wednesday, April 20th at 12 noon uh, here on the grounds of Wimo. Bring your chair, grab your lunch. Come sit out under the shade tree and listen to our candidates for mayor. And you'll be able to ask questions. Join us for midweek service re replay on Wednesdays uh, on Facebook and YouTube. This week's service will be at 2 p.m. due to the, the uh, senior ministry program at 12. Uh, don't forget, 12 Wednesday night Bible study will resume. This Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, via the conference call number. We are still, we got, we're in Revelation. So come join us as we continue to walk through the book of Revelations. Yes, Men and Women Day will be held next Sunday on the 24th at 10 a.m. The Reverend Eddie First will be our guest speaker for the occasion. All adult members are asked for a offering of, 20, of $300 and uh, youth members for $25. Thank you for those of you who are sowing your seeds, uh, for your tithes and your offerings, those of you who are using Gillify, PayPal. Oh, some of you all are still dropping it off. Some of you still bringing it. However you get it here, we thank you. Our second shut-in for and prayer list this morning. Uh, please remember these persons as you do your daily prayers. Sister Margaret Armstrong, Sister Dorothy Burley, Sister Ruth Crawford, Sister Ruthie Davis, Sister Dorothy Dix, Sister Judy Drumgo, Brother Edward Fletcher, Sister Janie Fletcher, Sister Gloria Freeman, Sister Evelyn Griffin, Sister Betty Joseph, Sister Jacqueline Lawrence, Sister Deborah Little, Sister Lucy Madison, Sister Viney Meadows, Sister Barbara Pulliam, Brother James Pulliam, Sister Frances Wilson. Also on a special require, prayer request list, uh, Sister Mary Cruz, Sister Shirley Darby, Brother Bobby Dorsey, Sister Mary Frails, Brother John Franklin, Sister Cynthia Harris, Sister Evelyn Powell, Brother Johnny Powell, Sister Tonya Walton, and Sister Ernestine Wright. Please remember all of these persons in your prayer. And now you've been waiting to hear our our youth with their Easter speeches, followed by Brother Gregory Matthews with the Sunday School Review, and then we will have a prayer by our own Reverend Johnson in that order.
To God be the glory for all the things that he's done. To God be the glory. Johnson and I'm here on behalf of my granny and papa. Today I will be citing the verse 1st John 4 9 through 10. And this is the love of God made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that God has loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Hi, my name is Emma Mahoney, and I will be reading Like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus, so lowly and so meek, for no one marked an angry word that ever heard him speak. I want to be like Jesus. I never, never find that he, though persecuted, was to anyone unkind. I want to be like Jesus, engaged in doing good, so that of me it may be said she hath done what she could. Alas, I am not like Jesus, as anyone may see. 
O oh, gentle Savior, send thy grace and make me like to thee. Happy Easter. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. For all the love I ever found comes flowing. Scripture John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, for whosoever believes in, him, believes in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. Goodbye! Happy Easter! Happy Easter! Happy Easter. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When I am down and oh my soul so weary When troubles come and my heart burdened be Then I am still and wait here in the silence Until you come and sit a while with me you raise me up so i can stand on mountains you raise me up to walk on stormy seas i am strong when i am on your shoulders you raise me can be and yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over my cup runneth over my cup runneth over. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shore. You're right. 
Amen, amen. Uh, Reverend Johnson, uh, I believe you and Brother Amos have been holding back on us. One of y'all can sing, and y'all ain't singing. Is it Amos? Amos the singer. I was wondering because some kids got it from somewhere. Thank all of you uh, for what you've done. We thank our youth for what they're doing, Brother Greg. Good morning, church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Just a reminder, our Men and Women's Day assessment is $300, and for you, 17 and under, it's 25 Resurrection of the King is the title of this morning's lesson, found on page 281 in your lesson commentary. The devotional reading is Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10, and the background scripture is Matthew chapter 27, and also chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Sometimes today, when we hear the gospel preached, the focus is on the cross. The resurrection is often ignored, assumed, or mentioned only in passing. In contrast, the preaching recorded in the book of Acts emphasized the resurrection of Jesus and barely mentioned his death. The apostles were preoccupied with the resurrection and emphasize it much more than the cross. Sadly, the church only seems to get excited about the resurrection once a year at Easter time. In reality, every Sunday should be Resurrection Sunday. The reason why the early church began to meet on the first day of the week was to celebrate Jesus' defeat of death. Imagine what church would be like if we consciously gathered every week to celebrate the resurrection. It is surely a remarkable thing that every Christian denomination from the Orthodox to the Catholic, from the Pentecostal to the Reformed Baptist, all believe one simple truth. The tomb was empty. There is very little else we can all agree on only some liberals deny the physical resurrection of Jesus, Jesus. Surely they thereby forfeit the right to call themselves Christians at all. I offer the following definition of a Christian. A Christian is someone who believes in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ and lives in light of the implications of that event. This is based on Paul's clear promise if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Christ has promised that he will be with us to the end of time. This changes everything. A dead hero in the grave is no help to us, but a risen Savior in heaven gives us great confidence. Because the tomb is empty and Jesus is, and Jesus is on the throne, we can know for sure that we will be victorious irrespective of what is happening in today's world. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. We live in a broken world. Every Christian will at some point in their lives know the pain of grieving for a loved one. When Paul told us not to grieve as others do who have no hope, he, he did not mean that we would not experience sadness. But because Jesus conquered the grave, we have confidence that one day we too will rise and so meet both Jesus and our believing loved ones again. This changes everything when we come face to face with death. Jesus' resurrection demonstrates that the kingdom of God has broken into history. Its final consummation will come at the return of Christ. Believers may be confident that when Christ returns, the Father will bring with him Christ, the dead in Christ, who also had submitted and entrusted themselves to the Father. 
The resurrection of Jesus is the guarantee of the believers, believer's resurrection and transformation at Christ's second coming. As believers, we live between the ages. The kingdom has been inaugurated, but we await its consummation. May our lives reflect God's kingdom presence in, on earth in anticipation of the day we will experience it fully with him. Thought to remember. Our king is risen. Everything has changed. Let us pray. We praise you, our Father, because you sent your son, only son, Jesus, to die for our sins. We praise you because you raised him from the dead and you raised us to eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, I admit it, I can sing. <laughs> but I can only admit that for one second because I'm in church. I, I thought I could sing, uh, Jariah, until uh, Rebecca kept shutting me down when we were at Ursula E. Collins Elementary School. I used to have the audacity to stand and uh, compete with her. Uh, but uh, you all of her, you know Rebecca. Yes, and, and one day God may let you know me in that way. We'll see. But many of you may be too young to remember uh, the Reverend W.J. Johnson, who was a Methodist minister for 60 years before he left this earth, uh, was known as a singer. Reverend Dean, of course, remembers him, and Reverend Crew. He was a singer. And, uh, and then uh, some of you may not know that Tyrone, uh, the founder, executive director of the Augusta Mini Theater, can sing. And he put his talent aside to uplift the children in this community. But we don't ever know. God just may not be through with him yet in that area. But we're blessed. We're blessed. We thank God every day, and I know that you all have thanked him for something uh, this morning. We thank him for the talents that he's bestowed, not just on our children, but of all the children. You saw our children. I claim them all, and we thank them. And all of our children, he also gave a little brains. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? He has been good to all of us all of us he has been good and now if we can just take a moment greg said a beautiful beautiful prayer and i won't attempt to repeat it but let's just take a moment because it's easter it's easter it's easter and he is risen he is here among us yes Yes, thank you, Lord. I heard it said. Thank you, Lord. He is here. And it's because that he was crucified, dead, and buried. But on the third day, on this day, this day, he arose. He arose. He arose. And because he did, only because he did, only because he did. One day, one day, we will all be able to stand before our Father God, and he will say, come on up, my good and faithful servant, not because we were so good, no, but because of what Jesus did. Our brother Jesus died for us, He's our Lord and our Savior. Let's go through this day remembering he is our Lord and our Savior. And let us go and tell it over all of the mountains that Jesus Christ is here. He's alive. He's alive. Don't you feel him? Don't you feel him? He's alive. He's alive. He's alive in each and every one of us. Praise God. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much that you sent your own begotten son to die the cruelest death that there ever has been. He did it and you did it. He came here just for that, to die on Calvary for us, for us. And it is in the name of your son, Jesus, the sweetest name, the sweetest name that we know that we pray. Amen, church. Amen. 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 Praise God.
Amen. And we thank for this morning that the blood will never lose its power. Yes, Pastor got on a new road. My 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 road maker called a couple weeks ago and said, uh, Reverend, uh, I've been praying and the Lord told me to call you. <laughs> and I got this design that, that's, that's for you because the, the Lord showed it to me. I said, okay. I said, well, if you can get it to me by Easter, I'll take it. And this is what was his design for me. So we thank God for Mr. Jervis Jarvis and his tailoring skills. I want to bring you this morning to um, scripture from the book of John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 and 20. John, the 20th chapter, verses 19 and 20. Then the same day of evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, were the disciples assembled for fear of the Jews. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he said, had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. We end there at verse 24. Subject this morning. As they sheltered, he rose. As they sheltered, he rose. I, I, I know you feel strange this morning because this is the first time in two years that most of you have been in church on Easter Sunday. The strange thing is that although we are in our third year of this pandemic, today most church doors are still closed. It is indeed a rarity, but, but millions of Americans will not gather in churches on Easter Sunday. But they're celebrating the resurrection at home. They are sheltered in place because of this coronavirus. But that does not mean that the spirit of the resurrection and the hope that it brings is lost. Around the world, people are still making extra, taking extra precautions to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Millions of people have been sheltering in place voluntarily. They, they say only essential people should go out initially, and then the rest of us go out only if we need to. You remember back in 2020, just, just two years ago, 44 of the 50 states closed down, told everybody to shelter in place. The idea was that everyone who is not performing an essential service from health care to welfare, uh, you are to stay home, avoid gathering with other people, so we went home. Oh, because we wanted to help stop the spread of this virus. They say you couldn't touch the donut. They say you couldn't shake hands. You couldn't even stand within six feet of one another. Oh, if somebody sneezed, everybody ran. The fewer contacts you had with others, the better chance you had of not contracting this virus. In 2022, for the third year 
Sadly, on this Sunday morning, many church doors are still closed. The ironic thing about church doors being closed, that, 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 that during World War I, no church doors were closed. During World War II, no church doors were closed. Even during the pandemic flu of 1918, no church doors were closed. A few churches refuse to shelter in place under the mistaken notion that the church must meet in a particular place and follow a prescribed ritual in order to worship God. They said if the church refuses to worship, that is a demonstration of lack of faith. However, most churches have reverted to this New Testament model in which churches met at home. We didn't assemble in the New Testament. Family worship together using that model. Many congregations, including ours, using the Internet. Now we have learned to spread the gospel through electronic means. Now we're still praising God. I want to serve notice that the church is not meeting in its facility on Sunday morning. We are not running in fear. We are sheltering in faith. While we are sheltering, God is working things out. God is working out the details, ramping down the Christ. It's not bad as it was. In, in his own small way, we are joining the worldwide fight to defeat this virus. Because we know that if we keep praying, if we keep the faith, our God with all power is going to work this thing out. The church is not hiding like the disciples uh, after the crucifixion. They, they locked their doors and were afraid of for their lives. The church is still boldly continuing to let our light shine. Not from a specific building, but from each and every home. The old, the old saints used to sing this song. song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All in my home. I'm going to let it shine, oh, all in my home. I'm going to let it shine, all in my home. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Then they would say, everywhere I go, come on. I'm going to let it shine, oh, everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine, everywhere I go. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. As Christians, we continue to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Although we, we are sheltered in place, in this way, the, the world knows that nothing separates us from the love of God. Not even the inconvenience of being able to come to church on Sunday morning. We are shouted from the rooftop, texted from our phone, posted on, on, on social media. Christ lives because he lives in my heart. 
this, this, this text find the disciples who had stood with Jesus sheltered away in fear until Jesus showed up. When, when Jesus was crucified, the, the Jewish leaders searched for the remainder of his followers so they would prevent them from spreading the, the good news of the kingdom of God. Afraid the disciples met in secret and locked themselves behind closed doors out of fear. They were afraid that the temple guards would come and arrest them and accuse them of stealing the body of Jesus. They were so scared. They, 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 would, they would fear that they would be crucified too. They literally feared for their life. So they shut the doors and locked it not once but two but three times. And they wouldn't even let nobody come in. Verse 19 says that, while they were sheltering in fear, Jesus came despite the doors being locked. Jesus appeared among them physically. His announcement of, of faith to them was simple. All oh, he had to do is say, any time Jesus shows up in your life, all oh, he got to do is say, he ain't got to say nothing. Else. Peace be still in the middle of something. Peace be still in your troubled mind. Peace be still in the middle of your sickness. Thank Jesus for the peace to be still. There they were afraid of the Jews, but, but not of Jesus. And he appeared to them and he calmed their fears. But just one week later, despite having seen the risen Lord and talked with him in their midst, they still met behind Lock doors. This time Thomas, who was absent from the first meeting, was with them. They, 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 they may have wanted to unlock the door, but, but Thomas was doubting the resurrection. Yes, yes, he had not seen the Lord for himself. As others had and protested that he would not believe. I'm not going to believe to I see the nail prints in Jesus' hand. I'm not going to believe to I put my finger in his side and in the midst of this atmosphere of doubt, Jesus showed up again. The doors were locked, but they were shut back. But Jesus showed up again saying, peace be unto you. The disciples on resurrection, they were sheltered in place and had lost all hope but things began to change when Jesus shows up the text says Jesus showed up and their spirits were lifted a little but but they still sheltered in place because there was one of their myths who who didn't believe eight days later John 20 26 say that Jesus stood in their midst and repeated the same words again peace be with you then even the doubt of Thomas became encouraged. Peter had gone to fishing by himself. Yes, the fisherman to tell you it ain't nothing like a good day sitting on the pond. And he was out there fishing by himself. And lo and behold, Jesus showed up out there at the fishing hole. Jesus, brother James, and his brother still did not believe him. But 1 Corinthians 15 and 7 said, he showed up to let them know, I'm still here with you. Yes, when Jesus showed up, they were encouraged because of their bold faith. They knew the resurrection was real. They were a little embarrassed with themselves because while they sheltered in place, he actually conquered death and rose from the grave. Today, as millions of Christians around the world continue to shelter in place. In the wake of this coronavirus, but our shelter in place is much different from those in the first days after the resurrection. 
The disciples sheltered because they had lost hope. But Christians today are sheltered not because of, we have lost hope. In, in the parking lots of churches, they are not filled and, 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 and it not, does not mean that we lost hope. No, 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 just because you didn't get an Easter outfit this year don't mean that Easter ain't going to come. Unlike the disciples of the text, we are not hunkered away crying tears of defeat. We are sheltered in our homes, anxious as a racehorse ready to run the race, chopping at the bit, waiting for the day that we can assemble with friends and make our witness know that the Lord has made a way out of no way. Unlike the disciple, we still have confidence in the power of God. Unlike the disciple, when we see dark times like this, we know that this too shall pass. Weeping endures for but a night, but joy comes in the morning. Unlike the disciples, although we have seen the tragedy of the cross, the horror of the nails, and the finality of the closed tomb, we do not doubt that Jesus rose early this morning. When we see the empty tomb, we are reminded there is no battle the Lord cannot win. No burden the Lord cannot lift. We're reminded that loneliness, that the Lord can comfort you. There is no promise the Lord has not kept. Dark clouds can be brightened. You might have woke up with a headache this morning, but I know the Lord can fix your headache. He got it all in his hand, and he got the whole world in his hands. The disciples sheltered because they were in fear of losing their lives. They, they stayed inside, closed the windows, locked the door because they were afraid that some would, someone would identify them as a as Christian. There is a difference between fear and caution. We shelter in place out of caution and out of good judgment. However, fear is just that we shelter in place because we are afraid of something of which we have no defense. We shelter in place like the old lady who lived in the dangerous neighborhood. She refused to move. One day she was down at the senior citizen center. Somebody asked the old lady why she was not afraid to live in the neighborhood with all the break-ins and the robberies. Aren't you afraid to be alone? The old lady answered says, I Every day I lock my doors out of abundance of caution. But I'm not afraid because I'm never alone. I got two friends by my side at all times. Mr. Smith and Mr. Weston. And they both from the class of 45. We may not have Smith and Weston. But I want to remind you that you are never alone because we got three friends. Yes, you got the father that's going to always be with you. You got the son that's going to always be with you. And then you got the Holy Spirit that's going to always be with you. We have the power of God all around us, and he promised to be with us and to never leave us alone. In this coronavirus pandemic era, be cautious. But remember, you are never alone. Yes, wear your gloves. Wash your hands. Keep your distance. But after you've taken all the precautions you can, remember that you're never alone. No, 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 never alone. No, never alone. He promised never to leave me and never to leave me alone. So I know that you might not see him. You might not know it. But I always got somebody standing behind me. Psalms 27 and 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. The disciples sheltered in fear and despair, but, but they were unaware that while they were hiding, God was moving in a powerful way. When Christ died, God started moving, but they were sheltered and they didn't see anything. When Christ died, there was an eclipse of the sun. The, the world turned black. Then suddenly there was an earthquake and, and, and many uh, saints arose from the dead. God was moving, but they didn't know it. Miracles of earthquake proportion was happening all around them, but they didn't know it. For three days and night, it appeared that nothing was happening. It appeared that all was lost. However, something happened early Sunday morning that they didn't see either. Matthew 28 and 2 says that there was another earthquake as the angel of the Lord rolled away the stone from Christ's tomb. The women came and found the tomb empty, and began running and telling the disciples, yes, we went down to the grave early this morning, but when we got there, Jesus was already gone. Yes, God was moving while they were sheltered. They didn't know it. God was rolling the stone away, but they didn't know it. God was bringing new life and raising hope, but they didn't know it. Unlike the disciples, we are sheltered, but we can see God moving. We see God moving when we see doctors, nurses, and all kind of people risking their lives trying to save us. in nothing but the hand of God. We see God moving when we see world leaders and scholars all working together to find a solution to this pandemic. Unlike the disciples, we can see God's hand moving and we see today that, that today that the number of infections are going down. Oh, it looks like God's hand is moving. Yeah, infections going down. Move, God, move. The number of deaths are going down. Move, God, move. Yeah, more people getting vaccinated. Move, God, move. Every time we see God move, we're reminded that when we are weak, the Lord will give us strength. It reminds us that when we are sad, the Lord will give you joy. Yes, yeah, he reminds us that when you fall, yes, yeah, the Lord will come by and pick you up again. Yes, when you're lost and can't find your way, the Lord will make a way out of no way. Well, Brother Clark, I guess I better hurry up and close. They ready to go find them Easter baskets and eat some uh, chocolate bunnies. But before I go, my brothers and sisters, we need to consider what happened when Jesus shows up. The disciples were sheltered in place for three days after the crucifixion and at least eight days after the resurrection. But each time Jesus appeared in the midst and their faith was renewed. And each time he showed up, they got stronger. And strong. There in lies inspiration. Christians get along from celebrating the resurrection. We celebrate the resurrection because we focus on what happened when Jesus rises, shows up in our situation. He showed up at the beginning of time when he said, let us make man. He showed up when he made us for us out of no way. He showed up when he put food on our tables and answered our prayer. When we face with difficulties like this virus has caused in our family, no believer should be discouraged. 
Don't lose your hope. God is still making ways out of no way. When our faith tells us that even when we cannot see him, God is making a way. If we hold on, he will show up and, and show up. Someone asked, oh, oh, why do you church folks make a big deal out of the resurrection of Christ? They don't know like I know that no matter what our situation, even when it looks like it's the darkest, God will show up. When he shows up, he will answer your prayer. When he shows up, he will heal your sickness. When he shows up, he will strengthen your weakness. When he shows up, he will bring a bright sunshine to your sad day. Yes, I got to, got to close. We get excited about Sunday morning because it means that he lives. If he lives, it doesn't matter how things look. Jesus is going to make it all right. Because he lives, I can face each day standing on the promise of God. Because he lives, I can get up even if I messed up and start all over again. Because he lives, there's no mountain too high for me to climb. Because he lives, there's no valley too low or too wide that I can't get out of. Because he lives, no defeat. I cannot turn everything. It will be turned into victory. Because Jesus lives, I know that if I fall, oh, you might not pick me up, but he'll pick me up. Turn me around because he lives. I know that if I shed a tear, he'll dry my weeping eye. For weeping endures but a night, but joy comes in the morning. No one of the songwriter wrote these words because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth living because he lives because he died I don't care my sins and your sins have been forgiven but early Sunday morning, he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. Yes, he still lives today. Christ Jesus lives. Well, Pastor, how you know? He walks with me. He talks with me. And he asks me how I know he lives. He lives in my heart. We hope you've been blessed this Resurrection Sunday morning for joining us. We hope you've been blessed by song, word, prayer, even our young people and those who have blessed us this morning. We thank all of you. If you're looking for a church home, our doors are open. Call us, stop by, email us. Let us know and we'll help you find your way to the house. If you have any prayer requests, prayer requests call us, email us. On our website is a link you can put in your prayer request and we'll respond to you. If all hearts and minds are together, let us stand for the doxology.
And now may the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abound with each and every one of us until we meet again and we don't meet in this place. We look to see you all in the heavenly place. Now let all of those who love the Lord say, God continue to bless each and every one of you.